Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Val Arkush, Chair of Montgomery County Board of Commissioners. Welcome to our Wednesday, September the 23rd press briefing. I'm sorry, we're running a little later than usual today, but we were having some technical difficulties, but we think they've been resolved. Uh, today is week 29 in our fight against the COVID-19 virus and week 13 in the green phase here in Montgomery County. Today, I'm joined by my colleague, Commissioner Ken Lawrence and our County Solicitor, Josh Stein. Since our September 22nd press release, we have had 42 new cases of COVID-19 reported in Montgomery County, which brings us to a total of 11,786. These positive cases are a result of a positive test for the virus, not from the antibody test. We had one of these cases from a long-term care facility. Uh, the remaining 41 are from the community. 33 of the 42 tests are from the last seven days or less. So this week we do have some outlier tests that we are getting late reporting on. Uh, these positive individuals are from 25 municipalities. All 62 Montgomery County municipalities are home to individuals with COVID-19. Today's individuals range in age from 18 years old to 95 years old. And you, as always, can check our maps at macopa.org slash COVID-19 for geographic and other information. Today, we have 31 females and 11 males. I am also pleased to confirm that no additional Montgomery County residents have lost their life to COVID-19 which leaves us at 831 deaths confirmed positive from COVID-19. But I do want to pause and acknowledge that over 200,000 Americans have now lost their lives to COVID-19. My team and I want to extend our deepest condolences to the families, loved ones, and friends of these individuals. In terms of our hospital update today, uh, we're holding steady from the last week. Uh, we have approximately 25 individuals that are in a Montgomery County hospital with COVID-19. Five of these individuals requiring a ventilator or approximately 20%. Um, in terms of our Montgomery County Correctional Facility, all is stable there with no new cases to report. I am pleased to announce that testing continues to go smoothly in our sixth week with MAKO Medical. And none of those outstanding tests were from our county testing sites. With rare exceptions, our results are available within the contractually promised 36 hours. I do wanna remind people that are being tested that at the testing site, you will be given information on how to register to get a text or an email directly from the MAKO lab when your test result is ready. I urge you to sign up for that notification. This is the fastest way to get your result as soon as it is available. Our testing capacity is currently at 50 tests per site per day which provides 300 tests per day across the county run sites, we continue to have good availability of testing. I wanna to continue to urge anyone who wants or needs to be tested to get tested. The more we're able to test our community, whether you have symptoms or not, the more we will know about what is happening across the county and be able to quickly suppress any outbreaks. As a reminder, the six county COVID-19 testing sites do not require a car to be tested. The sites provide testing at no cost, though insurance will be billed if you have it. They do not require a healthcare provider's order and will test individuals of any age, including children, who want or need to be tested. These sites do require an appointment. All appointments are made on the day of testing, beginning at 8.30 in the morning. You cannot book ahead. We do require that the person being tested is a resident of Montgomery County or works in Montgomery County. And I want to emphasize that you will not be billed or charged a copay for a COVID-19 test that is performed at a county-run testing site. 
Just a reminder, we have sites in Pottstown, Lansdale, Willow Grove, Green Lane, Ardmore, and Norristown. To register for a test and get the uh, addresses of the sites and the hours at each site is open, you can go online at macopa.org slash COVID-19 and click on the Green County Testing Information button. And again, appointments open up at 8.30 the morning of the day that you want to be tested, and the sites are open Monday through Friday. You can register by phone. That number is 610-970-2937. That number also opens at 8.30 in the morning of the day that you would like to be tested. There are uh, Spanish speaking operators as well as language line translators available by phone. Working together, we do continue to suppress the viral spread here in Montgomery County. Uh, happily, we're continuing to see some stabilization in our positive numbers, but there is still virus out there, folks. So this is by no means over. Just want to emphasize again, as our schools begin to bring students back uh, slowly but surely, Keeping the virus suppressed is more important than ever. Many of our 22 school districts are beginning the school year with a virtual format. Some are now starting to bring some students back slowly and carefully. And it is uh, just so important as this happens that we keep continue to keep working together to keep the viral spread as low as possible in our community. So let's take a look at how we are doing and we will start with our full date of test graph. Just as a reminder, uh, this graph shows the total number of daily positives in the gray bars in the background. Those are the number of people that tested positive on each of the days uh, that are so noted. And then uh, you'll see a number of different either seven day or 14 day running averages. And uh, why don't we go ahead and zoom in on this for the last um, month or so. These are our running averages by test date for the last 30 days, uh, ending on September the 18th. The uh, darker red line is the um, total seven day average. The pinker line is our total 14 day average. The blue lines represent the seven and 14 day average of cases that are just from the community. And then way down at the bottom, those yellow and orange, basically flat lines represent the uh, seven and 14 day averages from our long term care facilities. And you can see that for the last 30 days, we've had very, very minimal cases from those facilities. So I'm very, very happy to see that our lines are now trending down. Uh, we had sort of that bump really leading into Labor Day. And I, as many of you know, who watch regularly, I was particularly concerned about that, but we're now seeing those numbers start to come back down. So that is really great news. And then next we'll show our positivity graph. And as a reminder, uh, the orange line, the very jaggedy line is a measure of how many Montgomery County residents were tested on any given day. And then the blue line is the percent of people that tested positive on that day. And this line has um, had a nice steady downward trend with a little bit of blip in the last 30 days or so. Uh, these numbers are also through September the 18th. And today we have added in a zoom in on the positivity graph that we can go ahead and put up. I just wanna uh, uh, point out here that the axis is very, very different. Um, what this graph shows is uh, beginning on June the 18th, which is when we finally had a positivity rate below 5%. And as a reminder, 5% is considered suppression of the virus. So this is just a zoom in to, get, to give you a better sense of where we've been since June the 18th. So, you know, generally moving down, we've had this little blip up in late August, early September, but we do seem to see that moving back down again, which is great news. Today, uh, as of our data through September the 18th, our positivity rate is back under 3%. We are at 2.79% for the last 14 day average. So that's again, really good news. 
And that is the case, even though we have continued to test pretty much the same amount of people. On the last 14 days, we've tested 22,610 people. And compared to the prior 14 days, it was 22,617. So only seven different. So uh, we're in good shape in terms of the number of being, people being tested, although I'm always happy if we can test more. And the more people we test, the more information that we have. And we do have capacity to test more people at some of our sites in the county. So really would urge you to take advantage of that testing capacity. So what can you do to keep these numbers where they are? Don't leave home without a mask and put it on whenever you are within six feet of someone who is not in your household. So there's been some confusion about what to do when you're outside. If you're outside and you're walking or running and not near anyone else, you don't have to have the mask on. But uh, if you do a stop to talk to anybody, or, you know, in my case, even when I'm running or biking, I do wear a neck gaiter and I pull it up when I'm passing people out of courtesy, just figuring every little bit can help. Uh, but there is still a mask order uh, in force across the Commonwealth and masks need to be worn, even if you're outdoors, when you're around within six feet of people that are not from your household. So always keep that six feet distance and keep your hands clean and away from your face. Please get tested if you need or just want to be tested and cooperate with contact tracing should you get called. So we now today have a new tool in our toolbox when it comes to contact tracing. And I'm very pleased to announce the COVID Alert PA app. Uh, this is an app that the Pennsylvania Department of Health is making available at no charge to everyone in Pennsylvania. It's a free mobile app that can be downloaded from all the regular app stores. Uh, when you go in, just search for COVID Alert PA. I downloaded it today. It took about two or three minutes to set the whole thing up. And this free app helps notify and give public health guidance to anyone who may have been in close contact with another person who has the app and later tests positive for COVID-19. The app works without revealing the user's identity or location. So how does it work? Well, when someone receives a positive COVID-19 diagnosis, they will receive a call from the county's contact tracers within 24 to 72 hours. If the individual has the app on their phone, the contact tracer will ask them if they're willing to accept a six digit validation code from the uh, health department during the call. And I wanna emphasize this because the way this is set up, nobody can uh, play a prank on somebody or anything like that and send them a notification that they've tested positive. The, the code has to come from the health department. So if the individual agrees and enters the six digit code into the app, then they're given the option to upload the last 14 days of Bluetooth interactions with other app users. And if any of those users have been in close contact, which is defined as within six feet for more than 15 minutes, then the app will notify those individuals and let them know that they have been exposed to someone who has been diagnosed with COVID-19. And this is called an exposure alert. Now, when they get that alert, they will not be told who has tested positive or where they interacted with this person. They will just simply be told that they have been exposed to COVID-19. And you'll only get that notification if you've been within six feet of somebody for 15 minutes or more. The app does not collect or use any identity information. It does not collect or use GPS or any other kind of location information. The app is designed to be completely anonymous to protect everyone's privacy. So we are all playing a part in this fight against the virus. And the more people who download the COVID Alert PA app, the better the results will be. I saw a, a notification just before we hopped onto this briefing that in the first 24 hours, over 50,000 Pennsylvanians have downloaded the app 
Um, I am now one of them as of about an hour ago. And I really encourage everyone to download this app because so many times you just can't remember um, who you might have come in contact with, particularly if it was a couple of days ago. And sometimes you don't know the name of somebody that you were near. So uh, if everyone had this app, it would just exponentially increase our ability to let people know that they've been exposed for COVID-19, advise them to reach out to a healthcare professional and get tested if they'd like to be tested. So it can just help us tremendously get a handle on this virus. You can find complete information about this app on our uh, MACO site at macopa.org slash COVID-19 or you can go to www.pa.gov slash COVID slash COVID dash alert dash PA. All right, so that, that's good news. Um, another announcement for today is that our Office of Community Connections is making sure that residents continue to get access to all needed local, county, and state resources during the COVID-19 pandemic through our Navicates. Our Navicates are skilled human service services professionals, as well as advocates for the clients that they serve. Uh, previously, residents could go to any one of several different locations in the county to get help from a Navicate in person to find the services that they needed. Since that's not possible due to COVID-19, Community Connections has launched a tele-navigate service, which allows for a virtual meeting appointment with our navigates and provides a more personalized and private experience. Residents can now go online to macopa.org slash contact a navigate, and navigate is N-A-V-I-C-A-T-E, and fill out a form for this option, or you can contact the supervisor listed on, the, on this flyer by emailing H Weisberg, so that's H-W-E-I-S-B-E-R-G at montcopa.org. All virtual discussions with Navicates will be held in the strictest confidence this service is free of charge to any Montgomery County resident, and there are no income restrictions. I also wanna emphasize that uh, anyone can call on behalf of someone else. And we often have uh, uh, adult children of, of older individuals calling on behalf of a parent that they're concerned about. So we're happy to take any uh, meetings with anyone who has any kind of human service or social service concern about a relative or family member or close friend. And uh, we also have language line services available if that would be an easier way to communicate for anyone who wants to make use of these services. And then finally, uh, another reminder about flu shots. You have been hearing me talk a lot about flu shots lately. And I do just want to be clear that flu shots do not protect you against COVID-19, but they do reduce the chance that you will get the flu, or if you do get it, that you will have a severe case. And this is especially important this year because individuals with a severe case of the flu are often hospitalized and some need a ventilator to support their breathing. In this time of COVID-19, we want to do everything that we can to avoid increased hospitalizations for respiratory disease particularly of people who need ventilators. The Montgomery County Office of Public Health will be holding seven drive-through flu clinics and six weekly walk-up flu clinics in October. And you should be able to see um, a lot of information about this on this graphic. If you go to the website on the graphic, which is montcopa.org slash flu, you'll be able to see the dates and the times and the locations <clears throat> for all of these clinics. One important change to this year's community flu program is that residents will need to make an appointment and register prior to attending the clinic. We're doing this to ensure social distancing at the sites and maintain the safety of our residents and staff because of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
To register for a clinic, you can visit that same website, moncopa.org slash flu, or if it's easier, you can call by phone at 610-278-5145. That's 610-278-5145. The Office of Public Health is also partnering with the Montgomery County Immunization Coalition and families fighting flu to increase flu vaccination rates through text message reminders. County residents can text Montco flu to 47177 for reminders to get a flu shot. Once you text, you'll receive personalized flu related information about where you can go to get your flu shot and how to stay healthy during the flu season. And with that, I will turn over to Commissioner Ken Lawrence. Okay. Good afternoon. I have uh, two updates today. The first is regarding the election on November 3rd. This week, the Montgomery County Board of Elections approved 10 secure ballot drop off boxes, which will be located throughout the county for voters to return mail in ballots. Completed mail in ballots and absentee ballots may be dropped off starting Saturday, October 3rd. And ballots placed in these secure boxes will be delivered to voter services daily and stamped as received. All drop off boxes at the following locations will be available Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., on Tuesday and Thursday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., and on Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Election day hours will be from 9 a.m. until 8 p.m. And all the locations are listed there now. They are on our uh, voter services webpage as well, but I'll just go through them quickly. Uh, we will have one in Sheltonham, in Wall Park, one Wall Park Drive, Elkins Park, PA, 19027. And that will be a drive up, drop off location. There will be one in Lansdale, in the Church Road parking lot. And that will also be a drive up, drop off location at 226 Station Square Boulevard, Lansdale, PA, 19446. There will be one in Lower Marion at the Ludington Library, which will be a drive up, drop off location at 5 South Bryn Mawr Avenue, Bryn Mawr, PA, 19010. Narstown in the Airy Street parking lot, which will be a walk up, drop off, Narstown, PA, 19401. In Pottstown at the Montgomery County Community College, 101 College Drive, South Hall, Pottstown, PA, 19464. That will be a drive up, drop off location. Royersford in the Royersford Borough parking lot 1A, which is behind Borough Hall. That will be a drive up, drop off location, 300 Main Street, Royersford, PA, 19468. In Skipback at the Skipback Municipal Building, which is a drive up drop off location, 4089 Heckler Road, skip back PA, 19474. Upper Dublin at the Upper Dublin Municipal Building, which is a drive up drop off, 801 Lock Elsh Avenue, Fort Washington, PA, 19034. Upper Frederick at the Green Lane Park, which will be a drive up drop off location, at 2144 Snyder Road, Green Lane, PA. 18054, and that's at the intersection of Deep Creek and Snyder Roads. And then in Upper Moreland at the Willow Grove YMCA, which will also be a drive up drop off location, 3300 Davisville Road, Hatboro, PA, 19040. We will also have four satellite motor offices available. However, we have not set the hours for those sites yet. Please stay tuned to the voter services site for more information about them. But they will be at the Willow Grove Annex, 102 North York Road, Willow Grove, PA, 19090. At our Montgomery County Community Connections Office in Lansdale, 421 West Main Street, Lansdale, PA, 19446. The Mysterial District Court Office in Lower Marion, 925 Montgomery Avenue, Narberth, PA, 19072, and in Pottstown at the Montgomery County Community College on the West Campus, 101 College Drive, Pottstown, PA, 19464. Uh, and at these satellite offices, you will be able to register to vote 
and apply for a mail-in ballot if you would like to do that there. I would encourage people to regularly check the Voter Services webpage, which you can get to from www.moncopa.org. There's a tab Election 2020 there. There are frequently asked questions um, about mail-in ballots and also, of course, polling locations. We are still finalizing polling locations. And as I said last week, each registered voter in Montgomery County will receive a, a letter with your polling location on it. They should go out in the first week in October. Most polling locations are returning to their previous place, um, but some will have to be moved due to COVID. But everyone, whether your polling place is moving or not, will receive a letter. Um, if you don't have access to a computer or the internet, you can always call voter services seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. at 610-278-3275. Um, you may leave a message there, but someone will return your call. And second, I'd like to announce the Monco Strong Nonprofit Resiliency and Restoration Grant Program. Our County Commerce Department is partnering again with the Redevelopment Authority uh, to create this new program. And the purpose of this nonprofit grant program is to provide our 501c3 entities with financial support so they can remain resilient and open as employers and stakeholders in our community due to disruptions caused by the COVID-19 global pandemic. It's also to ensure that our 501c3s are able to be active participants and the restoration of the well-being and livelihood of our residents, communities, and county as a whole. We're committed to helping these organizations who have done an extraordinary job of helping our citizens during this pandemic. The application window will open at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, September 9th, 2020. The application will be online and applications will be accepted until 3 p.m. on Thursday, October 1st, 2020. The application questions can be found in the appendix of the program guidelines so applicants can prepare to apply now. For more information, including the program guidelines, eligibility information, and frequently asked questions, you can find that online at www.moncopa.org slash MSNP. And eligible applicants with questions can use the Commerce Department's assistance request form to submit questions this form can be found by scrolling two thirds of the way down the homepage at www.montpa.org slash ORG. And we'd also like to thank our Department of Health and Human Services, who has been working and consulting on the implementation, implementation of this program. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner Lawrence. So um, our next virtual briefing will be next Wednesday, September the 30th at 3 p.m. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions. This afternoon, we're joined by Deanna Durante from NBC10. Deanna. Hi, everyone. I wanted to touch base on the ongoing legal battle with Governor Wolf's gathering order, the number 250 that seems to be talked about here and what if any rules are in place in Montgomery County. Legal experts tell us while well, now the governor's order can't be enforced, any rules that are at the county or even the township level can be. So I'm trying to determine if there's any additional orders that the county has in place to supplement that order while the court battle continues. Yeah, thank you for that question. This has been really confusing for a lot of people. I've actually asked our county solicitor, Josh Stein, to join us today. And uh, Mr. Stein, do you want to respond to that? Yeah, certainly. So Montgomery County um, Health Department does actually have a regulation regarding mass gatherings in the county's health code. Uh, and there is a general provision uh, regarding uh, prohibition on mass gatherings, which may endanger public health. Um, specifically, you can read that the uh, actual language to you. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm having some uh, technical difficulties. I can't seem to get that up. But uh, while there's no specific uh, number associated with that, 
uh, any large-scale gathering in the county, the uh, Department of Health could uh, take action to prevent if we believe that it would um, present a, uh, a health issue to the public. Does that include indoor and outdoor events? So this is applicable to um, outdoor events or events in temporary structures. Um, there is nothing in the health code specifically regarding indoor activities. However, the uh, general provision of the uh, public health law does permit the uh, county's Department of Health to take action if there is a threat to the uh, health and safety of the general public. So if there was a big sporting gathering or concert or another event inside a hall or a rented convention center, you could go in theoretically and either break it up or require people to leave under the county health code. Yes, and so it, it is very confusing because there are multiple pieces to that. So regarding a school, like a sporting event at a school, uh, whether it be public or private, the law is very specific that the County Board of Health has the ability to um, regulate activities in schools. So that would include uh, athletic events. Um, specifically at outdoor activities, there's something in the health code and then later in the law itself, um, there's just the general catch-all provision that the Department of Health can take action when there is a threat to the health, and sa health safety and welfare of the public. But in all situations where the county believed that there was such a threat, they could take action as necessary. Has the county had to take action during this COVID pandemic or has it been mainly the enforcement of the state regulations at this point? Have you had to go in and, and break up social gatherings? Social gatherings, no, uh, that we have not had any uh, enforcement actions for social gatherings. There have been some business uh, gatherings that the county has had to step in on. And, and when it comes to businesses, is the state restriction, this 250 number, still applied to businesses so and the restaurants? So the governor's order related to businesses um, and specifically the percentage numbers for occupancy are still in effect. The federal court ruling um, specifically exempted fr um, from any de its determination, any of the business, uh, the orders affecting businesses, aside from the order that had closed all non-life sustaining businesses, which had already been lifted by the governor some time back. And also you, you briefly addressed the mask order earlier. You said that the mask order is still in effect in Pennsylvania. That's correct. And uh, Dr. Arkush, you posted over the weekend that you were out and about and you saw outdoor sporting events and there was some concern that you saw people without masks. Yeah, you know, and I'm happy to address that. So what I saw were uh, two different youth sporting events with parents on the sidelines, not six feet apart and very, very few masks. And I think it's just so important for people to understand that even outdoors, um, if you're close to people, if you're, if you're closer than six feet, there can still be a transmission. And in particular at a sporting event, I, I know certainly when my kids were playing sports, I would yell and cheer and jump up and down. And anything like yelling, which really um, requires a deep breath from deep into your lungs and then that big exhale can spread a significant amount of virus. And so at sporting events in particular, it's really important that people keep masks on, even if they're a little further than six feet apart. Because if people are energetically yelling and cheering for their kids, which I think any of us as parents are going to do, then you do increase the risk of spread of that virus if you're positive and you don't know it uh, even further than you might be expecting, you know, even further than that six feet. It's the same caution that we've been sat, uh, sounding around singing, that if people are singing, they need to be even further than six feet apart. So that's why there's a universal masking order in place. And if you're around people that aren't your household contacts, you need to have a mask on or you do increase the risk of transmission of COVID-19, even if you're outdoors. But in those events, the health department didn't go and intervene and run, remind people to put on masks, correct? Uh, not in these, no, no. Um, as obviously I know you're aware, we did intervene in a very large uh, 
youth sports gathering over the weekend where the business entity that was uh, running that event had submitted a plan to the health department which had been approved and they were in uh, almost in complete lack of compliance with the plan that they submitted. They claim on social media that they're returning to Montgomery County for an event in two weeks. They've received written information from our Office of Public Health as well as from the Expo Center that they are not going to be welcomed back at this time for that event. And they're welcome to come back in the future when our numbers are in a little bit better shape. But right now with our incidence, incidence rate of uh, tests per 100,000, we see wrestling still as a very high risk activity and because of the obviously the close proximity that the sport requires. So for now, that is high risk. We've advised our schools that they should not be having any wrestling. And uh, we have so informed this group. Jumping back to the governor's order here, given that this is still a little bit in limbo and the county code doesn't address specific numbers, do you foresee um, making any changes or coming up with any other restrictions as we get into the fall months in fear of the cases spiking? And is there anything else people need to know that they may not be aware of when it comes to limits and gatherings and things like that, especially as as people gear up for the start of you know high school football season and um, events that are set to begin in October? Right. So just again, a reminder, as Mr. Stein noted, all of the business mitigation orders are still in place. And inside of that are the restaurant capacity limitations, which are currently at 25%. They will be moving to 50%. And right now, if our numbers stay where they are uh, today, we will go ahead and allow that increase to 50% uh, at the appropriate date. I'm sorry, I don't remember what that date is. And um, additionally, we are going, our Board of Health will be meeting soon. And we will be asking them to formally vote on some of these uh, congregate numbers in terms of gatherings, social gatherings, expressive gatherings, things like that. So, you know, in the absence of with, with this you know, tiny bit of ambiguity under this governor's order, although we believe that the health code empowers us to continue to enforce these limits as we see necessary, we're going to ask our board of health to codify that with a vote. Okay, thank you. We have no further questions today. Okay, well, thank you everybody and stay safe out there. Please download the app and we'll see you next week. Thank you, Megan.